In most places in the world, the opening of the meat facility sounds like this. But we all know this isn't most places. This is Singapore. And in Singapore, the opening of a meat facility sounds like this. It's different here in Singapore. In most places, the first day of production in a meat facility, you'd walk around and you'd see this. But this is at most places. This is Singapore, the city in nature. So it looks more like this. See, when you make meat like this, it changes sonically, visually, olfactorily, even emotionally, the environment here and elsewhere too. It changes what you need to make the meat without changing what actually ends up on your plate. You don't need billions of animals and all the resources necessary to feed them. You just need a cell. From that one cell, you can make billions of pounds of meat. And that enables biodiverse rainforests to just be rainforests, as opposed to fields of chicken feed. It enables animals to just be animals. And right here at home in Singapore, it keeps us a little safer from diseases that have a tendency to just shut the whole world down. It allows us to be a little bit more secure in our own food supply, no matter what else is happening out there. And maybe even most importantly, it means that we can just enjoy chicken and beef and other kinds of meat all the same. The same dishes we're used to, with our friends, with our family, that taste and smell exactly as they always have. And yes, that also means chicken and rice. You know, I think at the end of the day, it's about allowing us to be human. Humans who enjoy good tasting meat, but also realize that human health and planet health and animal health are all intertwined. People that get there's not a natural world and our human world. It's just one world that we all share. We're just trying to live a good life on. And thankfully, this is more than just what's happening in Singapore, because Singapore has become the model, the leader for others to follow. From that moment that Singapore approved cultivated meat in November 2020, until the moment that Jack and Verdeep and three of their classmates sat down at that table in the middle of Singapore, at the first ever commercial sale, Singapore has established itself as the leader in building tomorrow's food system and others are all over the world are following. This right here, this facility, it'll be the largest cultivated meat facility in Asia, potentially even the world, when it's up and running early next year. When you look around when it's up and running, you'll see a 6,000 liter stainless steel vessel called a bioreactor. It's the machine that grows the cells and it'll make tens of thousands of pounds of meat. You'll see 50 people across different disciplines food scientists and biochemists and process engineers and food engineers, all running around this place, all working hard every single day to make this mission happen. This facility will make a good amount of meat and it'll allow us some time to build even larger vessels that will eventually make tens of millions of pounds of meat. Meat without the need to slaughter a single animal. Meat without the need to tear down a single tree or use a single drop of antibiotics because this is how we make meat in Singapore.